But before the age of 40, if you were to ask many Muslims, tell us about your prophet before the age of 40, many are unaware of his biography. You notice that before the age of 40, when Abu Talib was bringing up, Abu Talib, the prophet would latch onto him everywhere. To the extent that Abu Talib himself narrates, one day I was about to leave for Syria on a commercial expedition. The young Muhammad was only 12, he latched on to me as I was leaving. When he latched on to me, it hurt me that this my nephew is an orphan. Let me take him with me. The narration states that he took him towards Syria. On the way towards Syria, they walked past a monastery. The monk, when he sees these people coming, they say to him, we are coming here to reside for the night. The monk looks at them, what does he say? The monk says to Abu Talib, all of you are come, can come and are welcome to eat what you want to eat. But Abu Talib, I want to ask you a question. He said, what is it? He said, you know that young man was walking alongside you. Bring him tomorrow with you as well. Abu Talib said, very well, I'll bring him tomorrow. The next day when Abu Talib came, he looked at him and he said to him, where's the young man? That, that young man who was walking alongside you? He said, my nephew he said, yes. He said, he's just over there. He said, call him towards me. At the age of 12, and this is one of our proofs within Islamic theology, that from a young age, he was already inspired with the, the knowledge of God and the knowledge of his mission. At the age of 40, it's not that he became a prophet. It's that he was now told to announce his prophethood. Before that, he knew. Because when that monk comes and he sees him, he says to him, in the name of Allah and Uzza, as soon as the prophet heard this, he said to him, do not bring those names in front of me. Those are the most detested names to me. They were the idols of Quraysh. Then the monk said, I want to give you some sadaqa. He said, we do not accept sadaqa. Then he said to him, can I see the mark between your shoulders? He allowed him to see the mark between the shoulders. He looked at Abu Talib. He said, Abu Talib, if you did not know already, because Abu Talib is already knowing. If you did not know already, then know that this young man is what? Know that this young man is the prophet who Jesus spoke about and who Moses spoke about. And beware of the enemies that he's going to face. And he at that moment said to him, Abu Talib said, how did you know? He said, forget these signs. When you were walking and Muhammad was next to you, I saw every tree bound down after Muhammad left it. Therefore, what do you have? You have from a young age at the age of 12. But even after the age of 12, there is this innate love for justice and removal of oppression. In which way? One of the greatest incidents in his young age was at the age of 20. And years later, he would always refer back to this. At the age of 20, he refers to when he joined and formed a group called Hilful Fudul. Hilful Fudul, what was it? In Arabia, many people would come for the markets. When they'd come from the markets, they'd come from outside the market area. When they'd come from outside the market area, the narration states, they'd come from outside the market area and they'd bring their goods and the people of Arabia would buy. One of these people came from Ben Zubaid or some say Ben Zabid, he came to sell some of his goods to Al As ibn Wa'il, the father of Amr. When he sold his goods, he said to the father of Amr, he said, Al As, give me my money. He replied back to him by saying, Which money? He said, You've just taken my goods, I want my money back. He said, There's no money for you. And you're a stranger in our land, you're not going to get your money back. And I'm one of the aristocrats of Arabia, so you might as well forget about it. This person, what did he do? He was so enraged, he went on one of the mountains in Arabia and he said, O oh people of Arabia, I have come as a stranger to your land and I have been involved in a business transaction and none of you have sought to help me when this man has taken my rights. At least one of you speak up. A 20-year-old called Muhammad speaks up for him. He gets up and he says, it is unjust for us to be like this with a person who is a guest in our location. And secondly, in a business transaction, how can we be unjust when the goods have been sold? Let us form a league which looks after the rights of business employees and let us form a league which protects transactions within the Arabian state. 
How old was he? Remember, he wasn't old. He was 20. There is still no announcement of his prophethood. But from that young age, the first sign people noticed of him, a man who speaks out against injustice. We in 2011, the first example we take of him, how many of us speak out against injustice, be the injustice against Muslims or non-Muslims? Our Prophet didn't look at that man and say, well, that man is not a Muslim, so I'm not going to speak up for his right. Whenever we see any oppression anywhere in the world, we must speak out against that oppression. Because our Prophet from his young age taught us this. This is number one. Number two, not only at the age of 20 did he achieve this, later on he achieved two attributes which the Arabs would honor him for. They gave him the title as Sadiq and Al Amin, the truthful and the trustworthy. Notice that the Arabs didn't know he was a prophet, nor did they receive any book from him, but they were concerned with his ethics as a human being. You know, when the Kaaba was affected by a flood, the Kaaba was damaged. They needed to put back Hajar al Aswad. You know, the black stone in the Kaaba? They needed to put back Hajar al Aswad into the Kaaba. The Arabs had a fight with each other, and you know, unfortunately, some of these Arabs were fighting a bit too easily. The Arabs had a fight with each other, and amongst the fights that they had was this one. Who puts Hajar al-Aswad back in its position? One tribe said, we should put it back. Another says, we should put it back. A third says, we should put it back. A fourth says, we. They said, okay, let's do this. The man who walks in next into this meeting, he will be the one who chooses which tribe puts it back. As soon as he walked in, they didn't say Muhammad has walked in. They said As-Sadiq Al-Amin has walked in. The focus wasn't on the name. The focus was on the morals of the man. Today in Islam, there is too much focus on names and not morals. When he began his mission, before he began, you can't just come out in front of people and say, people, I am a prophet, follow me. No, you need to have attributes where for 40 years, no one can find a black dot on you. A human being has a funny way about themselves. Do you know what we do as humans? If you give us a white piece of paper and there's a black dot in the middle and you ask us what's on that paper, we'll say a black dot. None of us will focus on the white, will we? We love to focus on the dot. Even if there is so much white about someone's character, all we can remember is the black dot.